All right. We are good to go, I think so. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm your host, Jana Kaosti. You are currently tuning the Janak Lecture Series where you can see different lectures on the basic medical science. So today we'll be talking about the lymphatic system, the anatomy of the lymphatic system and a bit about the physiology of the lymphatic system. So without any further ado, let's get started. So, uh, when I talk about lymphatic system, it is one of the system among the 11 different systems which are present in our body. So among these 11 different systems, two of the systems are playing in the role of circulation. So I call them as the circulatory system. So one of them is cardiovascular system, another one is the lymphatic system. But there is a lot of difference in between these two circulatory system. If you see in the cardiovascular system, the cardiovascular system consists of a pumping organ which is the heart that pumps the blood and that blood passes through the different circulations whereas such kind of circulation system is absent in the lymphatic system even how the even though the, the lymph do flow so how the lymph flow we gonna explore in this lecture stay tuned the big difference uh, between these two system is that the lymphatic system is the site where the immune cells such as B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes are produced. So it is the system where the origin of the body defense mechanism takes place. So this makes a big difference between these two circulatory systems. So we can explore more in the upcoming slides. So first of all define what the lymphatic system is. I have mentioned the definition over here. It's the network of vessels that withdraws excess interstitial fluid, which we also call as lymph, filters that fluid through the lymph node, and then finally return it to the normal circulation, which is the uh, cardiovascular circulation. So I have highlighted three main points. One, it withdraws the excess interstitial fluid, which is now called as lymph, and filters that lymph because the, that fluid might contain different foreign particles such as cellular debris or pathogens so it need to be filtered before it goes into the normal circulations so that's basic two functions is being done by the lymphatic system so what if it doesn't withdraw that axis fluid what might happen one question and what if it doesn't filter that fluid so we're going to unravel this question in the upcoming part of this lecture. So it is the lymphatic system. So is a kind of accessory system to the venous system. How? Let's talk about this one. In this schematic diagram, here we can see the heart and this one is the arterial system. And here we see the capillary bed connected to the venous system and which is ultimately draining the blood into the heart. So you see at the level of capillary, the structure of capillary that is fenestrated, it has the pore in it. So at the capillary bed level, it, the blood is filtered to produce the interstitial fluid. And that interstitial fluid carries different nutrients and uh, essential gases such as uh, oxygen and delivers it to the cells. Whereas uh, the waste materials uh, from the cells such as carbon dioxide or other waste materials from the cells which are very minuscule, they pass back into the capillary bed and return to the normal circulation and finally they are transported to their appropriate excretory organ. But what happens is that when the blood is being filtered, sometimes the proteins molecules are leaked into the interstitial fluid and sometimes like the cells are dead will be, be due to the apoptotic mechanism and this apoptotic cells and the larger cellular debris molecule and sometimes the pathogen molecules which are quite large in size these molecules can't directly enter into the capillary system because the capillary pores are quite narrow so to transport these molecules into the normal circulation so that they can be excreted through their appropriate excretory organ there need to be a system 
which is larger in size so that this larger molecule could be easily transported. So the lymphatic system over here assists the venous system. Now, when the interstitial fluid is being formed uh, by the filtration of blood at the capillary level, after the filtration of blood about 80 to 90 percent of the fluid returns back to the normal circulation but about 10 to 20 percent of the fluid is failed to return back into the circulation. So for that fluid which has been failed to be reuptaken into the capillary system, the lymphatic system plays the role. And just brief information of known is absent in teeth, bone, bone marrow and the classical uh, information says that um, the lymphatic system is absent in the central nervous system. But recently wow. it's been discovered that the brain meningeal lymphatic system is present. Mm -hmm. uh, there, was, there is a paper uh, published in Nature last year uh, which clearly saw that at the base of brain there is a presence of the meningeal lymphatic vessels that assist in the lymphatic drainage of the central nervous system. But the classical concept says that the lymphatic system is absent in the brain. Why lymphatic system is important? Let's talk about this one by one. First, I told that about 10 to 20 percent of the fluid is failed to be reabsorbed back into the circulations. That makes about three liters of fluid per day that is failed to get reabsorbed by the capillary system. So, the, for the reabsorption of about that three liters of fluid back into the normal circulation, lymphatic system plays the role. Next, I told that sometimes the essential protein molecules are failed to be reabsorbed into the circulations by the capillary system. So for the absorption of the protein molecules, the lymphatic system plays the role. Similarly, larger particulate materials such as the apoptotic cells or pathogens, so for their transport into the circulation so that uh, appropriate immune system could be reactivated or the cellular debris could be excreted. So for this purpose, uh, they are uh, absorbed by the lymphatic system and drained into the normal circulations. That's why since it carries the larger molecules such as proteins or particulate matters, it's also known as the drainage system of coarse type whereas the venous system is known as the uh, drainage system of fine type. And more important, it is also playing the role in the absorption of the dietary fat. If we, when we take food, like after digestion of food, uh, the nutrients such as uh, proteins and carbohydrates, they are directly absorbed into the blood by the intestinal villi. But uh, the fat molecules being quite large, they are absorbed by the lymphatic uh, capillaries which are present in the uh, small intestine which is known as lacteals. These lacteals absorb the fat molecule into the lymph. So in a way that lymphatic system is playing also the role in digestive process. And the thing, the lymphatic system produces uh, the lymphocytes such as T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes which play the role in the defense mechanism. So, these are the different functions which make the lymphatic system an important system of our body. So, what if uh, the fluid is not reabsorbed? You see, like I told, about 3 liters of the fluid is reabsorbed back into the circulation by the lymphatic system. What if it fails to get reabsorbed means of course uh, like I told that there are the protein molecules uh, excreted from the capillary system so if that protein molecules are failed to get reabsorbed by the lymphatic system they remain within the extracellular space so that, in, that increases the osmotic gradient dragging the more fluid uh, from the capillary system into the interstitial fluid so ultimately the accumulation of the interstitial fluid occurs that results in edema so actually the edema is the swelling because of the increased volume of the interstitial fluid that makes the lymphatic system very important system of our body
Now, after having this knowledge, <coughs> let's talk about the components of the lymphatic system. What are different constituents that make up the lymphatic system? Number one is the lymph. So the lymph is clear, watery, slightly yellowish fluid, uh, which is similar in composition to the blood plasma. I told that it is clear, watery fluid, except the lymph which is present in the intestine just immediately after taking a food it is milky white in color so except that the lymph present in the intestine immediately after taking a food all the other lymph pre present throughout the body is clear watery fluid and it has a composition similar to the blood plasma what's the composition like the blood plasma contains water ions different proteins nutrients waste and gases molecules so similar is the composition of the plasma. So another component of the lymphatic system is the lymphatic plexus. So we can see in the pictures that um, the blind end of the capillary, uh, lymphatic capillaries are arising in the uh, uh, abruptly in the interstitial spaces. But if you see the blood capillaries, they are on one hand side connected to the arterial end and on the other side they are connected to the venial end but uh, about the lymphatic capillaries they are abruptly or randomly originating from the interstitial space and have a blind end so this is about the lymphatic capillary so the lymphatic capillary in the intestine is known as lacteals I previously told about it and this lymphatic uh, capillaries join to form the lymphatic vessels so this one, the larger uh, form of the tube uh, when the lymphatic capillary is joined, it, it is known as the lymphatic vessels or simply called as lymphatics. And when we see the structures of this lymphatics, they are beaded in appearance, uh, such as uh, the beaded necklace worn by the females. So why it appears beaded? So it has the anatomical correlations because when at the site uh, where the valves are present to prevent the backflow of the lymph in the lymphatic vessels at the site where the valves are present that portion is swollen and because of that uh, presence of valve the swollen structures give the lymphatic vessels a beaded appearance so when the lymph is uh, being flow uh, flowing through the lymphatic vessels as I told that the lymph contains different pathogens or cellular debris so they need to be screened whether it is harmful for the body or not. So for the screening they need to pass through the screening gate which is a lymph node. So the lymph node is a small uh, mass of lymphatic tissue which is present along the lymphatics and help in filtration of the lymph. And then now let's see the clinical correlation of uh, this lymphatic vessel sometimes like this lymphatic channel is exploited by mm, the parasites such as filarial parasites and this palace uh, uh, filarial parasites they proliferate into the lymphatic vessels and obstruct the lymphatic flow so as I told that when the lymph flow is obstructed there is increased volume of the interstitial fluid imagine accumulation of the three liters of fluid per day which fails to get reabsorbed so uh, it continues accumulating in the site where uh, in the body parts where there is lymphatic obstruction for example if it is obstructed in the leg there is increased um, accumulation of the fluid and causing the elephantitis uh, one of the symptoms like enlarged leg of the elephantitis filarial infections there's sometimes like there is an enlarged scrotum because of the obstruction of the lymphatics of this cotton and besides this filarial infections uh, the lymphatic system lymphatic vessels are the very convenient route for the metastasis of a cancer as I told that uh, the cells can't directly enter into the capillary system so for that it need to, there need to be some kind of larger vessels so the lymphatic systems are quite large in diameter compared to the capillary which is exploited by the cancer cell to get migrated uh, to the other part of the body so actually the metastasis of a cancer uh, occurs through the lymphatic vessels 
Now let's continue with the other components of the lymphatic system. I think so far we are going good. So other components of the lymphatic system is the lymphocytes, so which are the cells. These are the circulating cells of the immune system uh, which reacts with the antigens and they are produced by the lymphoid tissues. There are different lymphoid tissues in the human body. So we can classify this lymphoid tissue in the, as a primary lymphoid tissue and the secondary lymphoid tissue. And some authors uh, mention primary lymphoid tissue as central lymphoid tissue, whereas the secondary lymphoid tissue are also known as peripheral lymphoid tissue. So about the central lymphoid tissue, there are two, thymus and the bone marrow. And the peripherally located uh, lymphoid tissue are tonsil, spleen, lymph node, mucosa associated your lymphoid tissue which is present in the gut, also simply known as malt in the gut. So these are the different lymphoid tissues. So in the upcoming lectures we'll talk in detail about the anatomy, morphology and the functions of this different primary and the secondary lymphoid tissue. Talking about the more detailed classification of the lymphoid tissue, the secondary lymphoid tissue, especially the secondary lymphoid tissue, the secondary lymphoid tissue sometimes they might be clustered uh, to form an organ such as lymph node and spleen where these lymphocytes are so aggregated in the form of organ and sometimes they might be present scattered uh, in the organ such as this kind of scattered either they might be isolated or aggregation of few like 10 to 50 kind of lymphocytes that are aggregated and sometimes like um, more than that, uh, like lymphocytes are aggregated together. So we have a diffuse kind of lymphocytes, uh, lymphoid tissue. We have kind of solitary kind of lymphoid tissue where the aggregation of few lymphocytes, such kind of solitary lymph nodes are present in the lower part of ileum and appendix. And like sometimes they are aggregated in a mass, such as pure passage in the ileum, which is the peculiar feature of the ileum. So uh, these are the different uh, form in which the lympho lymphocytes are found in our body. Sometimes as an organ, sometimes as a patch, aggregated patch, sometimes as a solitary node, and sometimes even in the diffused form. So what is the basic difference between the primary and the secondary lymphoid organ? Let's talk about that one as well. <coughs> So the primary lymphoid organ actually is the site where the differentiation of the immature lymphocytes takes place. So after differentiation, the immature lymphocytes are converted into the antigen responsive lymphocytes. So they become more mature. And this progeny of the mature, a uh, kind of mature or competent uh, lymphocytes after getting differentiated, they migrate into the peripheral organs such as peripheral lymphoid organs such as spleen or lymph node or uh, pears patches or aggregate solitary lymph node or kind of thing like that. So once again I repeat the primary lymphoid organ are the site where the differentiation of the immature lymphocytes occur. So the after differentiation the immature lymphocytes are converted into the immunocompetent cells. And these immunocompetent cells, after being differentiated, they migrate into the peripheral lymphoid organ. And in the peripheral lymphoid organ, like they encounter the, with the antigen. After interaction with antigen, they become converted into the effector cells. And these effector cells finally uh, migrate into the blood circulation where the form the body difference mechanism. So this is the basic difference between the primary and the secondary lymphoid organ. So I told that the primary lymphoid organ are the site for the differentiation of the immature lymphocytes into the immunocompetent T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes. So where these immature lymphocytes do come from? They come from the bone marrow. So the origin of the immature lymphocyte is the bone marrow. So here we're gonna see how these lymphocytes are actually produced. 
So we can see that the stem cells are derived from the bone marrow, which is known as pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. And they differentiate into the myeloid progenitor cells and the lymphoid progenitor cells. So the myeloid progenitor cells, it forms the different components of the blood cells such as erythrocytes, the white blood cells such as basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, and monocytes, and also the thrombocytes. Whereas on the other side, other hand, the lymphoid progenitor cells it differentiate into the natural killer cells, which contains different granules over here. Whereas the small lymphocytes, this I want to focus on this one. So this is small lymphocyte differentiate into T lymphocytes and B lymphocyte in the primary lymphoid organ. So the primary lymphoid organ, I told that it is bone marrow. So the bone marrow produce the immature, the progenitor cells, progenitor lymphoid cells. And it also do help in differentiation. Not only it is the site for the production of the lymphoid cells, it is also the site for differentiation of that progenitor cells. So that after differentiation, the small lymphocytes is converted into B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. So the B lymphocytes, the small lymphocytes which are differentiated in bone marrow itself produce B lymphocytes. So you can just remember B for, for B. Bone marrow, B, B lymphocytes, B. So it indicates where it is differentiated. Similarly, the small lymphocyte which is differentiated in thymus are called T lymphocytes. So this uh, progeny of the B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes after differentiation they migrate into the peripheral lymphoid organ and at the peripheral lymphoid organ they interact with the antigen and after getting antigen they proliferate and get converted into mature and competent cells and this mature and competent cells finally are released into the blood circulation where the antigen antibody reaction takes place so the B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, one of the difference is B lymphocyte is differentiated in bone marrow and T lymphocyte is differentiated in thymus. But more than that, B lymphocytes after different, after proliferation or after getting mature in the peripheral lymphoid organ, it produced an antibody which is specific to the antigen. That's why I have written it as a committed cells. Whereas the T lymphocytes, it either helps B lymphocytes or it produce uh, or it reacts with the wide range of antigens. So it is non-specifically interacting with the different antigens. So I have written it as a uncommitted T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes, I again repeat, it is specific to the antigen. Whereas T lymphocytes can interact with wide range of antigens. Now just recapitulate the blood cells. So the blood consists of the blood plasma that is covering about 52 to 62 percent, whereas the blood cells somewhere around 40 to 50 percent of the composition of the blood is occupied by the blood cells. So the what are the blood cells? There are erythrocytes, red blood cells, thrombocytes, which are also known as platelets, leukocytes, which is also known as uh, white blood cells. So there, there are different white blood cells such as basophil, eosinophil, monocytes, lymphocytes, neutrophils and leukocytes. So just before we told that the bone marrow differentiated into the myeloid progenitor cells and the lymphoid progenitor cells. So the lymphoid progenitor cells differentiate into B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. So about 20 to 35 percent of the white blood cell are the lymphocytes uh, whereas the other white blood cells such as basophil, eosinophils, neutrophils, etc. They are derived from the lymphoid, pro, sorry, myeloid progenitor cells. So this is how uh, the productions of the different blood cells occurs. Okay, with this we come to the end of our lecture. But before wrapping up, let's recapitulate what we have just studied. We talked about different components of the lymphatic systems. Uh, it consists of lymph, lymph node, lymphatic vessels and we talk about uh, the significance of the lymphatic system, why it is important.
it is important because it drains the extra interstitial fluid if it is filled it causes uh, it causes the accumulation of the interstitial fluid leading to the edema and moreover that it has very significant role in the defense mechanism of body that makes the lymphatic system a very essential system of our body and we also talked about different lymphoid organ this lymphoid organ could be primary lymphoid organ and the secondary lymphoid organ and we talked uh, we also talked about how the immune cells are produced they are produced from the bone marrow and differentiated either in thymus or bone marrow and get converted into b cells b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes which are clustered or accumulated in the peripheral lymphoid organ and at the peripheral lymphoid organ they interact with the antigens and produce the mature competent cells that pass into the bloodstream and put, provide the defense mechanism for our body so that's all for today i think you got some take home message from this lecture we'll continue this lecture on the upcoming series so stay tuned in janak lecture series thank you so much for being here don't forget to subscribe and do share this information to other your fellows if you find it worthy thank you so much